kind of switch, like the other switchers, you know, at all. I don't, I don't remember if it was it, um, like where God provided, provided him food, and he refused it because he said it's unclean. All those from God, he, he yeah. just still said it's unclean. Is he questioned like if it's clean or not, even though it's like from God himself. Okay. Yeah, even though that you know that's his God, still you have to argue like over something that's dumb. We need more complex stuff to be satisfied. <laughs> Rather than kids who just need simple things. Yeah, that's the way I see it simple. Although, although sometimes the simple needs to be ingrained more even before we can actually move on uh, because the complex stuff will confuse us even more if the simple stuff isn't uh, fully within us. So, so I don't know that's part of what that means, uh, of having it be a part of ourselves, the Word of God be a part of ourselves. Uh, and then you can get through all those complicated issues uh, that come as adults. Uh, so, so anyway, I, I'll, I'll move on. I, I mean, it's just interesting to discuss, but we'll see the six problems of obedience for the sake of obedience. Number one, he says, it substitutes sacrifice for true obedience. Ah, it's like where you're coming from, that's what he's saying. If it's for just for the sake of obedience, then where you're coming from is not coming from God. You know, it's not because God loves you and God gave you grace and mercy, and then you're grateful to God, and, and that empowers you to do good. Uh, instead, it's just doing for the sake of doing. So, so what he's saying as true obedience is that it comes from, uh, from God. It's a response from what God has done for us. You know, it's not something we're acting on ourselves. It's actually a reaction or a response. That's the best word for that, a response to, to God, to God's love, what God has done uh, for us. Uh, questions for that? Or that's straightforward, as you will say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then he goes, alternatives. Uh, you could be shamed to obey. You could do things under compulsion and not freely. You know, have you ever got have you guys ever done that? You just do things because you don't want to feel ashamed? That's a that's a common experience. <laughs> very common or under compulsion you know so it's so there's obedience but it's not pure it's in a sense it's not out of God uh, but then again we might offer but there's something that could still be good about <laughs> but but for the purpose of this it's more of it, it doesn't really work uh, as the author is saying it, he might even say oh it can cause you these emotional issues and you end up seeing <laughs> which is why they wrote the book. Uh, number two, ignores the wholeness or integrity of a person, uh, which I think is an interesting argument, right? Because you can't be one thing on the outside and another thing on the inside. I mean, you can, but it hurts you in some ways. It hurts you on the inside uh, to not be integrated. Uh, because again, uh, we're actually holistic creatures. We're integrated uh, body, mind, soul, and everything else. Uh, so if one is off, you can feel it, uh, and you know it. Uh, instead, he's saying we need to explore why we don't do what we do so we can work this out. You know, if you have the self-awareness to explore that or get guidance from someone to explore that, you know, that's great. That could help you be restored at least internally and externally you're you're made more whole that's why you need to repent fully to God like the whole thing so that you can cleanse us and yeah. we can become new again yeah when we, when we become new again we can do things to God mm -hmm. strengthen us it, it's interesting it's like repentance can reintegrate you right um Sometimes you cannot like do by your own because like our strength is not enough to push ourselves like to step out from what we what 
we stay. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we're too stubborn. We we yeah. don't. Sometimes we think that we are right, but actually, in God's eye, it might not be. Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes God would need to shock you and kind of, hey, <laughs> <laughs> this is what you're doing, uh, in in a sense. Uh, to get to that place of repentance and then you can be more integrated once you know you're actually doing wrong you're not you're not doing the right thing Good even. Sorry. <laughs> I think one thing that like block us is like we feel so ashamed to uh. to, to be changed to to hurt yourself yeah yeah that that shame thing it just for God, like what scripture again is like when you like old thing is gone and new thing is new thing is gone. Yeah. We are a new creation. Yeah. Uh, but even if, if if you don't like put your old self out of your life, you cannot like have your new life. Like disciples of Jesus that he like Paul and he was like the murderer. He has like he has a lot of like bad things going on when he before he met Jesus, but he's with his new self and then he changed like, his whole life. And so that's like a very good example of obedience. I was gonna say sometimes so we're we have the will, you know. I mean we want to change. We want to like uh, follow this way, but sometimes because our of our body, like the flesh, you know, it competes with our our mind. That's why we cannot. Sometimes we cannot like just like step out, you know, back out from that position by our own strength. That's why we need God. Sometimes like the word addiction, you know, your your body wants it, although your mind feel like. I'm not supposed to deal with, but with your own strength, sometimes you're still gonna lose. Although you have that feeling to like wanting to get out of that position and not being the same one, but without God, sometimes it's almost impossible. Yeah, yeah, because you know we're we're broken people, uh, but but you know if we have this relationship with God, you know God. Uh, is the one that gives us the strength, and gives us the guidance, um, because in and of ourselves we just can't. Uh, and then God renews us or changes us on the inside, um, grows us, and then and then we just show, uh, you know, we just show the steps from infant to, to maturity. Not that we can become fully mature, uh, because that's an eternal life, but you know we grow. Again, individually, uh, based on what God, uh, how God deals with us, and how open we are also to, to God's leading. Uh, okay. Oh, how long should I go? Is it? Twelve fifteen. I don't know why. Are they, is it, are they not out over there? I don't think they're out. So. So, because you can go over a little bit. so I can. <laughs> so I can go a little bit more. Um, number three, out of the six problems of obedience for obedience sake, uh, it discourages a sense of responsibility. So it's like if you're just obeying for the sake of obeying, um, in a way he's saying you can ignore your intentions. Uh, and that's not what Jesus wants because in Scripture, uh, You know, you can see the questions that Jesus has been asked. You know, why waste the perfume? And, and Jesus has a different uh, thing in mind for that lady who, who gave the expensive perfume. Uh, he was able to explain the intention of the lady. Uh, why couldn't we drive the demon out? Or how is it that we, the Pharisees, fast, but your disciples do not fast? Um, so Jesus is kind of able to um, explain the intentions there, but. But the, for the people asking, it doesn't sound like you know they're they know what it is. So uh, 
So I guess what the author is saying is part of part of responsibility is you, you do have to know. You know. It's kinda of like, you know, you tell a child you don't do this and, and in a lot of cases you don't tell the child why. And it's okay. Because you don't have time to explain everything. Um, but as you grow and become mature, it's actually better if you know why. You know, what is God's intention as to why you should steal or why you should do all those things, you know? So it's, it's actually better. Um, but for a child, you just say, just because of that, you should do that for now <laughs> until, until you grow. So, so that's sort of my take on that. Any other, you know, any other thoughts on that? Or is it straightforward? Straightforward. Okay. Uh, another problem, number four. This promotes lying. Well, well, I guess that's another way to put it, right? Complying on the outside, but you're resentful on the inside. So you're lying to yourself. Um, number five. This denies our fallenness. Which, which we sort of already brought up. You know, we're broken people, we're fallen. So just do it implies that your pure will is able to obey. Just, just from yourself. You know, you don't need God. You can obey everything that God says out of your own power. So that's what it's saying. It, it, it's not true because we're, we're fallen. Um, and number six, it devalues.